Welcome to Vintage SF, the book haul edition for March. It was an amazing month. I started out with finding a book on bookoutlet.ca. Let me show you here on the screen. The Silmarillion Special Edition. List price, $262.99. Their price, $83.99. But it was on sale for $7.99. There was only one copy and I immediately picked it up. Now this next part might be a little controversial with some of you, but I flipped it. I'm not a big fan of fantasy, although there are some fantasy novels that I really enjoy. I don't even have a copy of The Lord of the Rings. So I used this special edition as trade at a local used bookstore. This used bookstore specializes in hardcovers and boxed editions like this. They also have a very good used book section. So I traded the Silmarillion and got 12 used books, used SF vintage books. Let me show them to you now. The first one from 1953, When Worlds Collide by Philip Wiley and Edwin Balmer. Now this is a revised edition from the original. And it's a 35 cent Dell book, number 627, if there's any Dell collectors out there. And it's got a very nice green text block. Next, Eric Frank Russell, Somewhere a Voice, Seven Problems, Seven Problems for Seven Worlds. This is an ace book. It's one of the smaller ace books from the 50s and 60s. This one is copyright 1965. The cover art is by Kelly Frias. Another ace book from the 1960s, John W. Campbell, Invaders from the Infinite. You can see where I bought this book from, or traded for it, Burton Lysecki Books. And you can also see a very interesting dragon-like creature reaching for a starship. This one is copyright 1961, and there was an earlier version in 1932. That would be prior to John W. Campbell's Astounding Days. Then I got a few ace doubles. First one here. One of our asteroids is missing by Calvin M. Knox. Now I don't know if Calvin M. Knox is a pseudonym. If someone knows, they can tell me in the comments. On the other side though, an author that I've been collecting is A.E. Van Vogt, The Twisted Men. And this ace double came out in 1964. This is a special ace double. I mean, I chose these ace doubles, so there's reasons I did. The first one is The Karchi Rain by Avram Davidson. But the real reason that I picked this one up the very first novel by Ursula K. Le Guin and its first printing, Rokanon's World. This came out in 1966. It's one of her Hainish Universe novels. I also picked up Edmund Hamilton's Star Wolf number three. I have a line on where I can get number one and number two. This one is called World of the Star Wolves. This one was printed by Ace Books in 1968. Here's a larger sized Ace Double. That means it would be from the very late 1960s or into the early 1970s. Uh, let me just check the date before I show it to you. Yeah, it's from 1970. The very first one is Mask of Chaos by John Jakes. 
but the real reason that I bought it was for this other one. I've been hearing a lot lately from a couple of my YouTube friends about Barrington J. Bailey. This is Barrington J. Bailey's The Star Virus. They stole the focus of futurity. Brian M. Stableford, In the Kingdom of the Beasts. This is another ace novel from 1971. It has Dyes Array number two in the top corner. So this might be the second of a series. If you know, you can let me know in the comments. Another John W. Campbell book, The Black Star Passes. Humanity Against the Men from the Invisible Sun. Copyright is from 1953. This printing is from 1972. Richard Cowper, Clone. Four Brothers, History's First Clones, take on the omniscient authorities in the year 2072. I believe it's Cowper, but I think I've heard it pronounced Cooper before as well. You can let me know in the comments which is the proper pronunciation. This was from 1972 as well. A shattering horror novel in the great H.P. Lovecraft tradition. I'm not a big fan of H.P. Lovecraft, but I have wanted to read this author. Colin Wilson, The Mind Parasites. This is a panther book. Copyright 1967. And the last one that I got in trade for the Silmarillion is from Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle, Into Deepest Space. It's a penguin book. Copyright is 1974. This must have been one of the last books that Fred Hoyle was involved in. This was printed by Penguin in 1977. So I'm very curious. Let me know in the comments below, would you have kept the Silmarillion or would you have traded it like I did for these books? I also picked up a few more books at that bookstore. These weren't on trade. A Hugo award-winning best science fiction novel of the year where the Late Birds Sing by Kate Willem. It's a pocket book. The copyright is 1976, and this book is from 1977. So obviously it's a reprint because it tells you that it's a Hugo award-winning novel. Another A.E. Van Vogt, The Silky. And it's a DAW book. DAW number 465. And the Silky is copyright 1969. There are a couple authors that I'm starting to pick up their books. One is Alistair Reynolds and the other is Ian M. Banks. The Hydrogen Sonata, a culture novel. I have no idea what it's about. I just picked it up because it was one of the culture novels. Let me know what you think of this one. So that was a rather large haul from one bookstore. I have some more books up here though. I picked up a free book from someone who knew that I liked science fiction more Stories from the Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Some of you may know that episode 
where they have the dinosaurs looking up at the plane flying overhead. Free is always good. Last month, I picked up some books by Zena Henderson. They were a collection of stories about the people. This month, I picked up another short story collection of hers, but it has nothing to do with the people. It's called The Anything Box. Copyright for this Avon book is 1965. I believe it was Ira at SF Words of Wonder who talked about this author and this book. There may have been another YouTuber who talked about it as well, perhaps Stephen E. Andrews. The Paradox Men by Charles L. Harness. So I picked this one up off of eBay. It came from Australia. It's one of the new English library series. Copyright for this one was 1953. Now I have an eBay seller who actually lives pretty close to me, so I was able to pick up a couple of books, save on the shipping. I do a series called The Best Of. It's a Ballantine's classic library of science fiction collections by authors. I do this with Ira from SF Words of Wonder, and Matt from Science Fiction Reads. After filming our last episode on Lee Brackett, we started talking about Nesfa Press. They are an amazing press by SF fans in New England. Nesfa stands for New England Science Fiction Academy. I'll put it up here on the screen so you can see. So I picked up two collections from this local eBay seller. One is about the author I was just talking about, Zena Henderson. And it's the complete people stories. Zena Henderson was a kindergarten teacher in Arizona. And so I believe that the stories come from Arizona. And here you can see a very nice wraparound cover. And the other one is the complete short stories of Cordwainer Smith. This book, along with the novel Nostrilia, is the complete works of Cordwainer Smith. The future history universe that he has created is called the Instrumentality of Mankind. I intend to do a future project looking at the complete works of Cordwainer Smith. Next, I want to talk about these three books up here. I went to a Goodwill store and they were having a sale. I was able to pick up these three books for $2.85 Canadian dollars. Jack McDevitt, Eternity Road. I really like the cover art on this edition. Copyright is 1977. Next, John Varley, Red Thunder. This is the very first John Varley that I own. It says that he is a Hugo and Nebula Award winning author. This is an ace book from the 50th anniversary in 2003. So guess what? The copyright is 2003. And the last book, an author that I think you all know, Michael Crichton, next. And the back cover has a green version. And the copyright for this one is 2006. Last. A couple of books up here. Actually, not last. I have one book over here I want to talk about too. These are some of the new books I purchased this month. There's a lot of talk on YouTube about this book. I know I watched something by Stephen E. Andrews and also by Bart. Anna Kavan. Ice. 
This is a Penguin edition. Copyright 1967. John Christopher, The Death of Grass. Copyright 1956. Once again, some of these come by recommendations from Stephen E. Andrews. I spend a lot of money because of that guy. And I was reading recently The Trillion Year Spree by Brian W. Aldous, and he spent a long time talking about Frankenstein. So I got a copy of the 1918 text of Frankenstein. Last, but certainly not least... I'm actually quite excited about this, and I'm going to be doing a whole video about this book. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute. Watch for a video on this one. It's a really important reference book. So that was my March, one of the biggest months ever of collecting Vintage SF. I look forward to reading your comments, perhaps your outrage on the Silmarillion. Until next time, keep collecting.